Welcome and good morning. Um, so today, as you can see, we're already back on the road. Uh, I'm making my way over to SCC Performance, where we're going to be fitting a very slight brake upgrade to my Mark 8 Fiesta ST. Do just what you want. by the power of editing, here we are. Now, I'm sure if you watch this channel regularly, you will know this place, uh, this is SCC Performance, and I have been greeted by an absolutely stunning lineup of cars today. As you can see, you've got my car, which you know very well, the SCC Performance Fiesta, which is similar to mine, although the exterior has been tarted out just a little bit. I need to do something about that on mine. You've also got the SCC Performance Time Attack Focus RS, which is looking pretty mean in this year's livery, um, and also this Focus, which I believe is a customer's car, but it's pretty stunning nonetheless. Anyway, the reason why we're here is to do a brake upgrade on my Fiesta ST. So let me talk to you a little bit about what that involves. So what is it that we're installing today? Well, this is a kit put together by the guys here at SCC to improve brake braking performance with the, the standard brake setup. And uh, once we've fitted this, it's basically as good as, as you can make it. Um, next level up is obviously big brake kit, so um, I thought I'd give this a try first after I was slightly disappointed with the braking performance on track. So, um, what's in the kit? Well, up front, you've got some Ferodo DS 2500 or 2500 brake pads. Um, these are, well, I'm not gonna go into the science of compounds, but hopefully these should hold together better and not fall apart when they get hot. Um, on the rears, um, not too exciting, we've got some genuine Ford brake pads. Reason for that is because right now, at time of filming, there simply aren't any upgrades for the rear pads. Lines, um, we're going to upgrade to braided hoses. So obviously the stock car has rubber hoses at the moment. Um, when the braking fluid gets hot, the rubber also gets hot, that makes it soft. And then when you put pressure on the brake pedal, the rubber is going to expand. So hopefully, if we replace it with braided hoses, um, because it's obviously metal braids, um, they should not do that. So that's the aim of these. Discs are quite exciting. Um, so here we are, we've got, this is a front one. You've got some milled J hooks on both sides. Um, and then you've also got that on the rear as well. So there you go, that's the rear. Now these J hooks do one main thing. Um, and that is when pads get hot, then they tend to glaze over. So if you've got something etched into your discs, in this example, a J hook, it will sort of keep, keep the face of that pad nice and clear, uh, nice and rough. So it actually gives, or continues to give decent braking. Now you can also have this in like a grooved fashion, which arguably allows some area for gases to escape as well, but I'm not too convinced about that. I think you really need drilled discs for that, but that's not what we're doing here anyway. Um, and lastly, some AP Racing 5.1 brake fluid to hopefully handle higher temperatures. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Now, as you can see behind me, we're just getting the car ready. We're gonna start with the fronts, then we'll do the rears, and then obviously we'll do the brake fluid last. To start, loosen the cap on the brake fluid reservoir. This will prevent pressure buildup as we move the pistons in the calipers. Then we can move on to the simple job of removing the wheels. I'm sure most of you are aware of how to do this, but it's always best to loosen the wheel studs whilst the tires are in contact with the ground, jack the car up, and then remove the studs and the wheels when it's safe to do so. First up, it's a good idea to push the pistons back into the housing just a little bit before attempting to remove the caliper. You can push against the old pads as you're removing them anyway. Next you'll need to remove this little clip on the front of the caliper and remove the two bolts at the rear and this should allow the caliper to slide free. Keep the caliper in hand whilst removing the brake hose support and then you can use a hook of some description to hold the caliper away from the way you want to work. Remove the caliper bracket by removing these two bolts behind the assembly and put it to one side. You 
You can now remove the disc simply by pulling it off the studs. Now, my car isn't that old, but it was clear that moisture had got between the disc and the hub, which had caused a little surface rust. This is perfectly normal, but always worth giving it a scrub with some sandpaper. The last stage of removal is to push the pistons back into the caliper. On the front, it's just a case of applying pressure, so we used a set of grips which did the job nicely. Now, it's time to crack out the new stuff. So first up, it's the shiny, shiny discs. For reference, on these particular discs, you can see the fins down the middle are straight, which means you can choose to mount them whichever way you like. This makes no odds on normal discs, but on machine discs like this, you want them to look cool, right? Now in future, if you wish to switch up to a big brake kit or similar, you need to pay attention to which direction the fins are pointing. If the fins are angled, then the discs are directional, so you need to ensure they are mounted correctly. Now to begin fitting, you firstly need to clean your new disc with brake cleaner. From factory, they have a very thin layer of oil on them to protect them from rust in transit and to ensure they arrive with you looking their best. Putting the disc back onto the hub is super easy and we can begin preparing the calipers. To begin, take a wire brush to the sliders in the caliper and clear all dirt and debris away. You can then apply high temperature brake grease to the caliper sliders which will minimise brake squeal. When you're done, you can replace the caliper bracket over the disc and tighten up the two bolts at the rear of the assembly. It's always best to double check they are tight using a torque wrench. Apply more high temperature grease to the back of the pad that has no clip attached and also cover the lugs that enter the caliper. This pad can now be balanced against the disc with the grease facing outwards. Repeat the process of applying grease to the rear of the other pad which has a clip attached and then you can clip the pad into the caliper. Once the pad is clipped in, you can then slide the caliper over the disc and into the caliper bracket. Torque up the two bolts at the rear of the caliper to hold it in the caliper bracket. You'll also need to replace the clip on the front of the caliper, but I didn't catch that on film. Now is a good time to wipe off any excess grease and give the caliper a clean if you fancy it. To replace the hoses, first start by clamping the stock rubber hose to avoid it leaking too much. You can now remove the hose from the rear of the caliper. Connect your new braided hoses to the caliper and ensure the bolt is tight. It's also worth connecting the hose support to hold your new hose close to the connection on the solid brake lines. This will minimise the amount of time the brake line is disconnected when swapping them over. To swap them over, loosen off the nut on the top, remove this circlip style thing, and then unscrew the hose from underneath. Ensure you have a drip pan underneath as brake fluid is pretty nasty stuff. Connecting the new hose is the same process in reverse. Screw the hose on, do up the bolts on top and bottom, and replace the circlip. Ensure you wipe away any excess brake fluid to prevent damage to other components in the future. Remember to safely empty excess fluid from the stock brake hoses before disposing them, as it can be harmful to the environment. And then it's just a case of doing the same thing on the other side. Okay, so as we have got the first set of lines off, uh, you, we've got our first opportunity to compare them with the Goodridge ones. So as you can see, the stock ones, rubber, flexible, when they get hot, they get softer and they expand even more. These new ones, braided with metal braids uh, and a protective coating on the outside so they shouldn't get worn. Uh, obviously metal doesn't expand as much as rubber when it gets hot, therefore you should retain your brake feel. So that's the plan anyway. So we'll see, we'll see how we get on. Now we're on to the rears. To begin, firstly ensure that the handbrake is off and begin undoing the two bolts that hold the caliper onto the caliper bracket. We can't push the pads back into the rear because they require winding, but the caliper should come off easily enough. 
Just like the fronts, you've got a further two bolts at the rear of the caliper bracket and that will be removed too. This leaves the discs free to be removed, although we found that the rear discs needed a little persuasion. With the discs removed, it's a good idea to give the hubs a rub down to remove any surface rust, just like we did on the fronts. When it comes to winding back the pistons in the caliper, you'll need a specific tool set. They're not expensive, and I'll leave a link in the description to a set so you can see what you need. As you can see here, it's just a case of attaching the correct adapter plate to the tool and winding back the piston. You can now place your disc onto the hub, but remember to clean it with brake cleaner beforehand. The caliper brackets will need a rub down with a wire brush before we apply the high temperature grease as we did with the brakes on the front. The caliper bracket can then be returned to the car. Do up the two bolts on the rear of the caliper bracket to secure it in place. High temperature grease can be applied to the rear of the pads in the area where they touch the caliper and also to the slider arms before balancing them on the caliper bracket. One of the pads will have a wire clip attached to the top and this should go on the side nearest the car. Place the caliper over the disc, pad and bracket assembly and secure the two bolts at the rear of the caliper. Now, brake lines. This is the same process as the front. Clamp the line, undo caliper side first, install the new brake hoses on the caliper side first and at this point <laughs> I realised it was pretty impossible to get my camera in there. On the body side of the line you've got the same nut, bolt and clip combo as the fronts so undo the bolts, remove the clip, replace the line, do up the bolts, replace the clip. Beware of brake fluid on the floor. And then it's pretty much the same on the other side. So there we have it. That is pretty much the hardware fitted. So that is discs, pads, and lines. And you may have noticed that we didn't replace the fluid as we went. Now, the reason for that is because it's actually pretty difficult to get the system bled efficiently if you let it sort of like run dry. So the plan is to put the new stuff in and then drain the old stuff out the other end until it, it runs through. So uh, let's see how we get on. To start, we pumped as much of the old brake fluid out of the master cylinder as we could. We then cracked open a bottle of the new stuff and topped up the master cylinder in this rather blurry shot. On the corner furthest from the cylinder, we attached a brake bleed kit to the bleed valve and opened the bleed valve. Now this bit is easiest for two people. We stationed Pat in the driver's seat and asked him to slowly pump the fluid through the system, whilst Matt watched the master cylinder and topped it up as required. The last thing you want is to pump air into the system. If you look at the tube on your bleed kit, you may or may not be able to see the fluid being pumped through. And then it's simply a case of repeating this process for the other three corners. Ensure you work your way from the furthest corner away from the master cylinder to the closest. And lastly, you want to check for leaks. We asked Pat to apply a constant pressure to the brake pedal, whilst Matt checked for leaks at all four corners. And then we're done. So it's just a case of sticking the wheels back on, admiring your shiny new pattern discs before taking it out for a quick test drive to ensure that everything works as it should. Now remember, with new discs and pads all round, there will be a bedding in process. So be careful on your first few drives, and if possible, avoid heavy braking whilst the new kit beds in. 
So there you have it. Hopefully that's a little insight into what's involved with making the stock brake setup on a Mark 8 Fiesta the best it possibly can be. Now clearly I've not used this in anger yet, so my plan is to take it on track. And when I do that video and cover all that kind of stuff, then I'll also talk about what these are like to live with day to day. But that said, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna to be too much different to the stock and hopefully on track, they're gonna last a little bit longer than my stock brakes did as I only really managed three laps of what was quite an easy course. Um, so yeah, I think with that, we'll leave it there. A massive thank you to Matt for fitting the brakes today. Uh, and obviously the team at SEC is there always really welcoming. So we'll leave it there. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next one. I, 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 I,